Well, we've already had church. I don't quite feel like leaving yet. Is it okay if I just share a little bit with you this morning? Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. God's not a stale, past tense, bygone era God. He is moving in this generation, in this day. We've, I've been, over the last month, rehearsing to you revivals with John Knox, revivals with John Wesley, revivals with Duncan Campbell, revivals in Pensacola, revivals in our own church. Let me just tell you, God's not done. God's not done. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2, he said, Lord, I've heard of your fame and I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them. Can you say that? Repeat them. Lord, we've heard of these incredible things you've done. Repeat them in our day. Don't let this day pass. Don't let this generation pass. Hearing about what you used to do without experiencing it, God, repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. And I've shared with you what I believe, that we're in the middle of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and I believe this is a, a special time. I believe that God wants us to make this our prayer. God, birth revival again. Lord, do in this church and do in this city and do in this nation. Lord, indeed, what you've done in time past. Not the same way, not the same formula. We're not walking through the same thing, but Lord, do again in this day the mighty works that you have done all through the ages because you're the same God that you were back then. And Lord, your, your word is still true because you said if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I'll bring healing to their land. And that promise is for the United States of America in 2019. If we, his people, will start to pray and repent and turn from wicked ways and seek his face. God's not just going to do a work in you. He's not just going to do a work in your home. He's not just going to do a work in this church. It won't be able to be contained in this city. This region's going to be shaken, but it's not just about this region. God wants to bring healing to this nation. And let me tell you, it'll go out from here like rays of light all around this planet. I'm believing God that there is indeed a last day's revival that he's sending just before his return in the clouds, just before he comes to catch his bride away and to take us out of here that there are still many who do not know him, that his heart is to see a last day's inflowing of those who don't know him to come to salvation. That's what we're seeking. <sighs> I've just been praying, God, let your glory fall. Let your glory fall. I, I've been sensing his anointing at odd times. You know, I sense his anointing when I'm preaching. I sense his anointing when I'm praying. I sense his anointing when I'm worshiping. I sense his anointing this week. I think it was around the 15th tea box at... Village Green. Andrew was with me, and I told him that. I said, God's, God's glory, God was just speaking to me. He was speaking to me about his glory. He said, well, I think it's because of that drive you hit. You probably felt like I said, no, it wasn't that. I don't know how much glory there was in what I was doing over there. But God's saying he's going to pour his glory out here. Went to a church having a sale yesterday and we're looking at some stuff there and while we were there I've, I've been in that church I know the pastor there I've preached in that church and I 
Nobody's in the sanctuary, but the doors were open. So I just took liberty and started walking through the sanctuary. And I went over every pew, and I started praying, God, send your glory here. Went up on the stage. I started praying over their musical instruments. I said, God, touch whoever's playing these instruments. Went over to the pulpit. I said, God, I pray a fresh anointing. God, I pray you'd, you'd pour out your glory here. I'm telling you, God's wanting to pour his glory out. And it's not to be contained in a place. It's not to be contained in the four walls of the church. God wants to pour his glory out at Walmart. God wants to pour his glory out in your house. God wants to pour his glory out wherever it is that you work. God wants to pour his glory out at Conneaut Township Park. God wants to pour his glory out. I'm believing that there's going to be encounters with God that people are experiencing outside the church, that they have to come to the church and say, could you tell me what's happening? Because there's just something going on that I don't even understand. I've been asking you to pray. If you've been praying, say amen. I've encouraged you the old 20 years ago, the tape that I've shared with you about Revival Fire Tape. And go online, you can listen to it. I know there's the audio quality is not the best in the world, but there's an anointing there. If you haven't went online and got it, take a picture of that real quick so you have the website. You can go online, you can get if you if you if you're old fashioned enough to still use these things they call CDs. I've made many, 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 many of these, and they've got them at the bookstore. And Mike and Carl aren't here, but I think somebody's Somebody in the bookstore will help us out today and make sure that, that, that we'll have them ready. And uh, we'll just give them to you. There's no charge. We're just giving these out to every, anybody that wants them. There, there's two of them, side one and side two, from the old tape back when we had sides. Amen. Somebody remembers cassette tapes back there, sensing the glory over there. Grab them, and here's the only deal. We give them to you for free if, if you'll just listen and pray. Is that good? Pray for revival. Pray for revival. Well, last week I got to preaching about the glory of God, and then the glory of God just started moving. I didn't get to finish, and that's good. I don't know how long you stayed, but something unique happened. We just had people come up and start praying, and I had the opportunity to jump up on the keyboard, and I shared with Steve, it was, I felt the, just the beginnings of the same anointing of 20 years ago and kind of my stance when we didn't never say it but we kind of just had this idea when when we were in revival that if they're praying then I'm playing so as long as people stay in and pray we'll just stay and play we'll just keep on worshiping if they stay for 20 minutes and we'll worship for 20 minutes and if they stay for an hour then we'll stay for an hour and if it's two hours or if it's th however long and last Sunday there was just like the glory of God here and it was almost like a wave and you could sense the glory of God and then that wave kind of crested and then it kind of went down and we just kept on people were still praying so we just kept on playing and then another wave came in here and then that one kind of crested and went down, but then another wave came in after that. So we were here till after 2 o'clock in the altar call last Sunday. I don't know how long we'll tarry in the presence of the Lord today, but I'm, I'm just, I'm in. I'm here. I'm here as long as, as long as you want to stay and pray, and as long as he's here, I'm here. Is that good? So I'm, I want to just share with you a little bit about the glory. If you jump back one page in your Bible over to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14, but the time's coming. Time's coming. The time is coming when the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. It will happen. I shared with you last week the knowledge of the glory. It's not just that the glory of the Lord's here. It's the knowledge of the glory, and the knowledge is the perceiving. It's the seeing. It's the discerning, and it's the experiencing of his glory. It's not just that his glory comes down. You ever have the glory of God come down, and God touch people, but you're sitting there, and you don't feel a thing? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but I've had that. I've been in services where God's moving, and I miss it. Sometimes God's moving, and my mind is a million miles 
out somewhere else thinking about something else, and I'm missing what God's doing. And he's saying, it's not just that God's glory is poured out on certain people, but the knowledge, the experience, the perception, the knowing of the, the glory of God is going to cover the earth. It's going to circle this planet just like the waters cover the sea. That people everywhere are going to all of a sudden have this awareness of the presence of God. I'm telling you, I'm beginning to just experiencing it here and there, just driving down the road. I see our city differently. I look at people's houses, and I, I told Jessica yesterday, we were driving, I said, God wants to pour his glory out here. Sometimes people don't have quite the vision that I think God wants us to have of our city. We need to see our city differently. We need to stop looking with fleshly eyes. We need to begin to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to call us to a, a, a just an opportunity of intercession just as you're driving around. Listen, if you get a, if you're, if you drive for a living, let me tell you, that's your opportunity. If you're in a vehicle, you, you just carry the glory of God wherever you go. Get in your car and start praying. Lord, I pray for these. God, I pray for that, th this house over here and these people over here. I don't know if they know. God, I pray for that guy that just cut me off. Lord, just touch him and give him a revelation. Lord, I just pray. Lord, for, Lord, for a change, for revival, for glory to come. Amen. See, the glory changes everything. When you're touched by the glory of God, you don't remain the same. It's not a conscious choice. It is when you desire the glory and he gives you the glory, it will change you. When you get exposed to fire, fire changes everything it touches. Fire will burn stuff up that needs to be burned out of our lives. Somebody say amen. amen. The glory of God, when we desire it, we say, Lord, do it again. God, do it in our day. I don't know about everywhere else in the world. Here's what I'm praying. Send your glory here. Send your glory here. We need God here. Send your glory here. Is somebody praying that with me? Send your glory here. God, I don't know what's happened. I've heard of what you've done all over this world. I've heard of an outbreak of revival here and there and everywhere. I'm standing in the gap for Conneaut, Ohio. Send your glory here. I don't know who all's praying for glory in Kanye. Somebody might be praying for glory over in, in, in Akron. Somebody might be praying for glory down in Columbus. Somebody might be praying for glory over in Pittsburgh. They got a lot of glory over there. But we need glory here. Hallelujah. We have a responsibility. Church, hear me. You and I have a responsibility. Don't take for granted that God doesn't just want to do this to you, but through you. God wants his glory poured out in those streets. Is that good? I'm going to just give you a simple three points and I'll talk about them. This is the place. Right here. This is the place. Connie out Ohio. This is the place. In 1857, the Dutch Reformed Church in New York City, things looked bad. They had no money and almost no people. The church had former glory. It was gone. Their pastor, Jeremy Lamphere, was faced with a decision. Either shut it down or pray. Things were bad. And he decided we'll just pray. We'll pray. If God shows up, maybe we keep it going. If not, we haven't lost anything. So we told the church, we're going to call a prayer meeting. 
We'll pray on Wednesday. We'll meet at noon. Everybody come and pray. He got there Wednesday. It's noon. Nobody came. So we just started praying alone. Ten minutes. Nobody came. He's still praying. Ten more minutes. Nobody came. But he just kept on praying. After about 20 or 30 minutes, he heard a creaking of the stairs. Someone had come in the church and were walking up the steps. And they joined him in prayer. They had a few when they were praying. A few more minutes, a few more people came. By the time that the hour of prayer was done, they had a total of right at 20 people. Nothing miraculous happened. God didn't show up in some incredible way. They just prayed. And pastor said to those 20 people, let's come back next Wednesday and pray again. Next Wednesday, they met at noon. They said, we're going to have an hour of prayer. They started at noon, and they had a few more people that came. They said, we just feel like God's calling us to pray. So they prayed for the hour. And all of a sudden, something started to break in the spirit. They said, let's come back next Wednesday at noon. And when they came back, oh, they had a lot more people coming. And they prayed for an hour. And they sensed the power of God. And he said, we need, to, we need to keep on praying. The Fulton Street prayer meeting in New York City was born because people just started to come and pray. Within a matter of weeks, over 3,000 people came to the noon prayer meeting at the Dutch Reformed Church on Fulton Street in New York. 3,000 people came to pray. They started not just praying on Wednesday. They started praying every day. They posted signs outside. The sign said, prayers are not to exceed five minutes so that we give opportunity for everyone to come and pray. Doctors would come and pray. Lawyers would come and pray. Clerks would pray. Bankers would pray. Messenger boys would come and pray. Delivery men would, on their delivery route, would tie up their horses and run in and pray and get back on their horses and keep on their delivery routes for the day. It didn't stop there. This little prayer meeting spread to the point that within six months, they had over 10,000 people coming at noon every day to pray. And God changed the city. But it didn't stop in New York City. Revival was birthed throughout the nation so that noon prayer meetings started all over the country. In Chicago, there was a noon prayer meeting. It changed the church. They had, to, they had to put up a waiting list for people to teach Sunday school. They had so many people who wanted to teach. They could not, they didn't have a place for them to teach. They said, we'll put you on our waiting list. Wouldn't that be incredible, Deborah? Sorry, we have so many people wanting to teach the Word of God. Wow. In cities around this nation, there were so many people to baptize. They couldn't baptize them in the church. They went out in the winter and cut holes into the frozen ice so that people could be baptized in water because they were so hungry for the glory of God. Ships coming into New York City had people who were on the decks 20 miles out from the city. The glory of God would fall on the ships and people would begin to repent and cry out to God because they had prayed in that city. I'm telling you, God wants to do something something if there'll be people who say this is the place 
Some people might have given up on Connie out Ohio. As you can tell, I haven't given up on this place. This is the place God wants to send his glory here. Oh, don't play patty cake. Somebody praise God. We don't need... We don't need more money. We don't need more jobs. We don't need more influence. We don't need more power. We don't need the stuff. You know what we need? We need the glory of God in Conneaut, Ohio. We get the glory of God. All the other stuff will be taken care of. We need to prioritize the glory of God because if we have everything else and we miss that, then we've missed it all. God, we need more of your glory. We have a responsibility to this place. God puts you here. God puts you here. God put you here to seek his face for revival and for those that need to come yet. God, help us to not be complacent. God, forgive us being selfish with the glory. Wednesday night, I was just teaching, and the glory of God broke out in here on Wednesday night. There were messages in tongues and interpretation. Charity had a word from the Lord. She wrote it down. She said, I saw raindrops, huge drops of rain falling sporadically. And the Lord said, it's time to prepare for the rain is coming. So dig a well. Prepare now for what is coming. What you're seeing is just the beginning of what's going to be poured out. Prepare, prepare, prepare for an abundance of rain. This is the place. Now is the time. Now is the time. There you go. This is a sovereign season right now. Right now is the time. We've been complacent. God's shaking the church. He's saying, wake up. God will wake you up at 3 in the morning and say, pray. Listen, if we won't pray any other, God, God can get his church to pray. We need to be willingly desperate. God knows how to make us desperate. I want to be willingly desperate. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 says, It shall come to pass afterward, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons. Your sons. Your sons. And your daughters, and your daughters, and your daughters, and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I'll pour out of my spirit in those days right now. God spoke to the prophet Joel. Over 2,000 years ago, he saw today. I'm convinced. He saw this time. This is a prophetic generation. You know, you hear about the builder generation. You hear about the baby boomer generation and the baby busters and Generation X and millennials and all the other labels. Let me tell you what this generation is. This is the afterward generation. It'll come to pass afterward. That's this, this is the last generation. This is the generation that's going to see him come in the clouds. This is the generation that is praying and saying, Maranatha, Lord, come back. Lord, come back. Lord, return for your bride. We have finished the the commission that you've placed us here for. God, we want your glory. God, we want your glory. 
This is the generation of sons and daughters being raised up to speak prophetically for the Lord. This is the generation that God's using the babies in the nursery. This is the generation. <sighs> Several weeks ago, we're over here praying at the altar. I was up here praying, and Eileen was sitting right here. Eileen was here, and I looked back, and there were some people that were over here praying over her, and Nicole was over here. Nicole had her hands there, and here's little Gianna, and little Gianna had her hand right up there, and she's praying. Little Gianna, she's this tall. She's over here, and she's praying over Eileen. Let me tell you, we... We're going to see sons and daughters that are going to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, that are going to operate in prophetic gifts. God's pouring His Spirit out right now over there. God, touch those kids. God, I pray. Lord, a prophetic anointing on the next generation. God, I pray that we're not going to lose our teenagers, that young adults are not going to go out into the world and into ungodliness, but God's going to raise them up as mighty men and women of God who I haven't just heard about the glory. They haven't just heard about the power, but they've experienced it. They know the glory of the Lord, that it's attractive to them. Let me tell you, the devil's got a whole lot of shiny objects that he wants to put out in front of you, and he always hides the hook. You see the, the bait, but he hides the hook. Let me tell you, the glory of God is more radiant than anything that the devil has to offer. God, pour your spirit out on all flesh. This is the place, and now's the time. <sighs> Last Sunday, Shantae wrote me a note. She said, the Lord gave me a vision of the body. We're praying and seeking revival. She said, I looked around, and I saw water surrounding us. She said, the water was as high as the sky. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. She said it was rushing water. And as we go deeper in prayer, she said, I heard a cracking and waves were crashing. And she said, then there was a break and a loud thunder and the water fell all around us. And it went out from here into all the nations. And the glory of God went into the nations. And the nations felt the power and the glory of God. We need to not take lightly what God's doing. There's a stirring church. God, don't pass us by. This is the place. Now's the time. Now hear this. I am the one. I want you to make that personal. I'm the one God's calling. I'm the one that God's speaking to. I'm not saying that about Pastor Carson. I want you to say it about you. Are you hearing me? God, this is the place. God, now's the time. And I'm the one you're calling. You don't need to come and have Steve come up and lead us in worship and have Pastor preach. A great God's called you. I said, God's called you. God's called you. And God's placed you where he wants you in this place at this time. We need to understand God's calling. We are responsible to stand in the gap. We are responsible to intercede. We are responsible to, to travail in prayer. We are responsible to see new life brought forth in the Spirit. We are responsible to intercede for revival. We are responsible to pray. We're responsible to turn from our wicked ways. We are responsible to humble ourselves and get on our faces before Him. We are responsible to stop letting petty things get us so distracted that we're out out of his presence. God forgive us. 
What have you been focused on? What have you been worried about? What's troubled you? Can I tell you, it probably doesn't matter. It might matter in light of this week. It might matter in light of what's happened. Does it matter in light of all eternity? Of souls that are being ushered out into outer darkness? Does it matter in light of God's glory? The devil gets us too easily distracted, church. I don't know about you. I want a lifestyle of repentance. Because when I have a lifestyle of repentance, and we all have that lifestyle of repentance, it cannot stop in the church. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble yourselves and pray and seek my face and turn, to turn is to say, God, change my mind so I go in an opposite direction. It's a lifestyle of repentance. I've been preaching it over and over and over. If we'll have that, he said, I'll forgive your your sin, but I'll heal the entire land. We can't expect them to repent if we don't. Is that good? The church, we need to just get on our face before God. If we will, you know what, I'm, I'm not praying that God just sends his glory to this place. God, let there be revival in the streets. God, let there be revival in the streets. Let there be such an awareness of the weight of the glory. God, that that people are woken up in the middle of the night. And God, that you touch them right where they're at. God's speaking to our leaders to prepare a wineskin for the new wine that he desires to pour into this church. Angela Ross, Chris and Angela lead our our children's ministry on Sunday morning. We met a couple weeks ago. She said, Pastor, I've been praying. I took the Revival Fire CD and I, I, I took that. I think she had it maybe on her phone. She said, I was walking and the Lord began to speak to me. She went and started walking around the school over there on Chestnut. I guess they call it Lakeshore now. I still call it Chestnut. She said, I start praying over our kids. She said, oh, wow. The, the, amount, the glory of God just praying over the school. And I shared with her, I said, I feel like God's calling you to lead your team in this. So she gave an invitation to Kingdom Builder workers. And this week, yesterday... Some of our workers from Kingdom Builders met over at Gateway. And they just started walking around the schools and praying. She said, as we prayed, we prayed as a group, and then we separated, and we're just walking around the schools and praying. And they had, I guess, a, a phone there, and they were, had worship music going. And she said, the song came on, Jesus is in this room right now. Making this place I stand holy ground. She said the Holy Spirit spoke to one of the ladies and said he's in these schools and he's transforming them into holy ground. She said they went and they walked around the middle school and she said the song Break Every Chain came on and one of the ladies said the Lord spoke to her that he's going to break chains of anxiety and fear and depression and homosexuality and suicidal thoughts in the school. And she said we're going to keep on praying. We're going to these schools and we're praying over these kids. Let me tell you, God has a work to do and it's not going to be contained in the four walls of the church. Church. What's God calling you to do? I know how to get a Pentecostal crowd quiet. <laughs> I don't want to just have goosebumps. I don't want to just sing and shout and run around and get all sweaty and then go home and say, man, wasn't that good? What's God calling you to do? Is there an area of obedience that you have not been completely faithful in following through with yet? 
that God speaks something to you and you have not followed through, he's telling you now, get that done. Don't leave it undone. Don't leave it undone. Some of you, God, you've started praying and you felt a burden over a specific thing and you know you've kind of left that. You just kind of set that over on the shelf over there. I'll go back to that later. No, this is the place. Now is the time. I am the one. God's calling me to stand in the gap and to make up the hedge. I want his glory to be poured out. Are you with me? As they come to the instruments this morning, at the dedication of Solomon's temple, they were praying for God's presence. They went to the city of David. David had set up a tent. They brought the Ark of the Covenant. Remember when they brought the Ark of the Covenant from the house of Obed-Edom? And they set it up there. And just outside of the the, the old city walls of Jerusalem was the city of David. And they set up a tent. And they worshiped day and night. They let incense continually be arising to the Lord. They con- there was constant worship. 24 hours a day, they worshiped. Solomon built the temple. And as they built this grand temple, they went down to the city of David. And they got the Ark of the Covenant. They brought it up the right way. The priests got it with staves, and four priests carried it, and they worshiped the Lord all the way up that hill, and they brought it up to the temple of the Lord. As the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant and set it down in its new home into the holiest of all, the holy of holies, They placed the Ark of the Covenant and they were there and the priests walked out. And in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 10, it said, And then it came to pass that when the priests came out of the holy place, that the cloud, the cloud of His glory, the cloud of His presence, the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. The priest could not stand to minister. The weight of the glory descended so heavily that they couldn't even stand up anymore. This is a wonderful building. It's not the house of the Lord. You are. This is some concrete and some steel and some drywall. You are the temple of the Holy God. The presence of the Holy Spirit lives in you. Paul said, don't you know you're the temple? We need to pray, God, Fill this house. Fill this house with your glory so that I can't stand to just go through church anymore. I can't stand to just have the routine anymore. The plan is going to be all interrupted. God, come in and change everything around. God, I pray that you would come in with such a powerful anointing that I wouldn't be able to stand anymore. 20 years ago in that revival, we had prayer meeting during the day. We would come out and we'd pray during the day and then we'd have church at night. We were over in the other sanctuary. We were having prayer meeting. Brother and Sister Willett were there. We had prayed for a while and this building wasn't completed. It was, it was still in construction. It was all rough and everything at that point. And Sister Willett said, would it be okay if we go over and pray in the new sanctuary? I just feel like God wants us to go over there and pray. I was listening to Brother Willett preach here. It's on our website of him preaching back about, I think about six or eight years ago. I was just listening to it. And he talked about that prayer meeting and how the Lord spoke to Sister Willett. And I remember the day we came over here. When we came here, Sister Willett saw in that prayer meeting, she, she couldn't believe that we couldn't all see it. She said, I saw an angel. And this was all framed in like this. But the, 
the ceiling wasn't there, so it went up about four feet higher than this. She said, I saw an angel, and he was standing right here. And she said, he was as wide as that, which that's, I believe that's 14 foot right there. And she said, his head was all the way at the top. The glory of God was in that prayer meeting so greatly. We're just standing up here praying. Diane, I don't know if you remember that because you were here and you helped me that day because I couldn't hardly talk. And I was staggering and you and I don't remember who the other, there was another lady helped me walk out of here that day because the glory of God came in so powerfully that you couldn't even stand. God, show up. Do it again. Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. Do it again. And start with me. Do it again. Start right here. God, right now. Right now. Lord, this is the place. Now is the time. I'm the one. And I'll stand in the gap. God, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, it's going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, but it's got to start somewhere. Start in Conneaut, Ohio. Start here, oh God. Start here, oh God. We value your glory. We value your presence, oh God. Breathe. Holy Ghost, breathe. Breathe. Breathe upon your people, oh God. To rese, eme recuto de rasanda na bayehe me rashatai. God, breathe upon your people. God, pour out of your spirit in these days that sons and daughters will prophesy. Lord, do that that you have desired to do all along. Holy Spirit, you are the orchestrator of your church. You let these be born at this time for such a time as this. For such a time as this, saith the Lord, I have called you. Seek my face while I may be found. Seek my face, saith the Lord. Find a place and seek his face, church. Find a place somewhere in this room and seek his face right now. Come on, church. Find a place. Come up here to the altar there at your seat. Walk around the room somewhere. Get on your face before God. Find a place and seek his face. Seek his face. Seek his face. God send your glory. God send your glory. Let the weight of your glory fall upon us, God. Let the weight of your glory fall upon us, God. Let the glory of the Lord fill the house of the Lord. This is the place. Now is the time. I'm the one that you're calling, God. I repent. I turn. I stand in the gap. I seek your face.